Tonight on Hunter. Hey, come on, guys. I don't think it's such a good idea. Then why don't you wait here? We'll be right back. Stop, you little punk! Don't move! You're staring the murder rap square in the face. It's not gonna go away. Ben is innocent. I'm telling the truth and no one cares. Your father cares. Oh, yeah? So what? You must help him, Sergeant Hunter. He is your son. Guys, I don't think this is such a good idea. Then why don't you wait here? We'll be right back. Ben, relax. Ben.
Good morning, belly bum. <laughs> this is just what I need right now. Well, you're gonna need to cut through the material you got there. We. Oui. And that's because Kinnons and McGovern are at TDY at the Academy, and we have their open. Those coneheads can't type. No kidding. Rick, I got a guy at the desk that uh, wants to talk to you. Yeah, good. Can he type? You're gonna need that. Uh, how do you do? I'm Sergeant Hunter. I apologize for taking you away from your duties, Sergeant. My name is Nguyen Tran. Oh, what can I do for you, Mr. Nguyen? It's about my son, Ben. He was arrested last night. There was a shooting, and he was with the boys who did it. Oh, the uh, elegant motor shooting. Yes. But Ben is innocent. Well, I think there's been some sort of mistake, Mr. Nguyen. I'm not handling that case. Sergeant Matthews is. I'll get him for you. Please. I hoped you'd look into Ben's case personally. Well, I don't understand. Ben's mother was someone you knew in Vietnam. Lin Dan. When my tour of duty was up, I asked Linda to marry me and come back to the States, but she wouldn't leave her family. I know. Twelve years ago, I received a letter saying that she had died in a refugee camp in Thailand. The letter never did mention a child. I wrote that letter. She spoke often of you. She told me that you wanted to become a policeman in Los Angeles, so that's where I sent a letter. You are a man who makes his dreams reality, Sergeant. Well, not all of them. When I got home, I wrote her many more times, and she never answered my letters. Then when Saigon fell, I, I wrote her again. All my letters were returned unopened. The regime was very hard on anyone who had any affiliations with Americans. She was sent to re-education camp for a couple of years. Of course, she wasn't allowed any letters. I was sent to the camp as well because I served in the South Vietnamese Army. That is where I first met Lin and the child. Well, ben is not your blood son. Before she died, she asked me to make two promises. The first, that I would always protect Ben. The second, that I would never tell him that his real father was alive. But because what happened last night to Ben, I must break the second so that I may keep the first. You must help him, Sergeant Hunter. He is your son. Hello, Ben. I'm Sergeant Hunter. Have a seat. You're in a lot of trouble, you know that? I had nothing to do with that guy getting shot. I already told that star detective. Where is he? Well, uh, he's doing something else right now. I'm taking over for him. Well, he didn't believe me, so I figure you won't either. It's quite a story you got here. In your statement, you said you were with these two guys, and you only knew them by the nicknames of Slice and Speed. Is that right? That's right. And you never got their real names. Hey, what's the point? 
No one pleased that. I didn't know they were planning to steal a car or kill anyone. Hey, look, I'm telling the truth and no one cares. Your father cares. Oh, yeah? So what? So what, huh? Look, you got two choices. You can feel sorry for yourself and go to prison for murder, or you can shut up, relax, talk to me, and maybe I can help you. Now, what do you want to do? Hey, why does it matter to you? I'm a police officer, Ben. It's my job. Now, you want to talk or not? Good. Now, why don't you start from the very top and tell me what happened? Hey, how you doing? Hi. Just talked to Joe Matthews. Mm. So what's this about us taking the elegant import shooting? Oh, yeah, look, I was going to talk to you about that. Better late than never. It's very personal. It's personal? Yeah. Well, I thought we decided that if something personal came up in a case, we'd shift it over to somebody else. Look, you're absolutely right. I'd like to make an exception in this case. You'll go along with me, I don't want you. Yeah, okay. Thanks. No, I've never seen this kid around here. Do you remember a couple of guys in their 20s who might have been hanging around the showroom? Oh, man. Now, a lot of guys come in here, you know, with big dreams and empty pockets. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I tend to only remember the ones who buy. No, mm. sure. The, well, you think these guys came in here to case the joint or something? Well, yeah, it's possible. Tell me something. Is that uh, unusual for salesmen to be working that late? No, not really. I mean, Franz had a lot of, you know, paperwork to finish up. He'd, uh, he'd had a big day. <sighs> big day. When I heard out what happened, they, it made me sick. You know? He was such a good guy. Oh, there's Ken. You want to come with me? Yeah. Ken? This is Sergeant McCall. Ken Martin. Oh, yes, of course. We spoke on the phone. Right. Anything new since then? No, the stolen car hasn't turned up yet. And uh, the vehicle that was left on the lot didn't have any prints. Something will come up. I'm sure you're doing all you can. Come on, we can talk in my office, upstairs. Ken, the boys on the floor have kind of pitched in for some flowers, so just let me know where we can send them. Oh, Julie is making all the funeral arrangements, so talk to her, Jack. OK. Thank you. It's my pleasure. You're handling the funeral arrangements. Didn't Mr. Regal have a family? Well, we get a lot of rolling stones in this business, Sergeant, and um, Franz was Austrian. He never talked about family back home. Um, Tell you the truth, I don't know anything about him other than his monthly sales report. I am going to pay for the funeral. Uh, it's the least we can do. Morning, Uncle Ken. Hey, Danny. A customer for me? Oh, I'm afraid not. Uh, this is my nephew, Danny. Oh. Sergeant McCall, LAPD. Hi, Danny. Hi. Right. Geez, I hope you catch the creeps who kill Franz. I'm sure we will.
something wrong? No, nothing's wrong. You look a little tired over there. Want a soda? How about you just get me out of here? Ben, you think this is a joke? Huh? You're staring the murder rap square in the face. It's not gonna go away, you know. What if I don't find speed or slice in any of these books? Don't worry about that when the time comes. Meanwhile, keep looking. Okay. Why don't you give me one, too? Yeah, well, only if you have good news for me. Well, how about 26 reasons why I ought to buy an imported car, but other than that, zip. Oh. Did it come up with anything? Not yet. You know what I don't get? Why a couple of guys in their 20s would want to hang out with a teenager? Especially if they're going to rip off a car. Unless the kid's in on it. No, I don't think he was in on it. He's got a couple of priors, truancy at school, shoplifting. It doesn't make him a car thief or an accessory to murder, does it? Well, look who's here. The only two cops in the department that don't have a big enough case load. Do you mind telling me why you took the Rago case away from Matthews? Interesting case. Really? Is that why you pulled strings to have your only suspect released to his father's custody? What the hell is going on here? OK, I think we all better have a talk. And the kid still has no idea that you're his father. No, he doesn't. You gonna tell him? Uh, Tran said it's up to me, but I don't think his mother would want me to. What do you want to do? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. You know, looking at Ben, I feel as though the war stole a little bit of my life, too, you know? I just don't know what the hell I want to do right now. She should have told you that she was pregnant. But she couldn't, Charlie. She knew I'd come back for her and the boy. She'd have never left Vietnam or her family. But she did leave. They ended up in Thailand. Look, I know that. That's because her family was wiped out. By that time, she was married to Mr. Nguyen. That's right. Yeah, come in. Captain, the vehicle stolen from Martin Motors has been found. It's at the impact. Oh, thanks, man. Charlie, look, I think the boy is telling me the truth. They'd like to help him. So what are you waiting for? Thanks. Looks more like vandalism than it does an accident. Let's get the lab over here and have him take a look at it. Yeah. Sergeant McCall. Hi. Oh, I see you found our car. You sure did. Jack Stone, Dan Martin. This is my partner, Sergeant Hunter. Mr. Stone, my sure. pleasure. And I'm Martin. How are you? Boy. Look at this, would you? They destroyed a $50,000 car. We're gonna have to have her towed out of here. Oh, the car is not going anywhere until we have a look at it. Mr. Stone, no hands, please. Oh, sorry. I can't believe Franz was killed just so a couple of kids could go joyriding. Did you have any luck with that dink kid that you caught? Now, what kind of language is that? I'm sorry. Didn't mean anything by it. I'll let you know if we find anything out after we release the car. Good. Uh, we'd appreciate that. Shall we go? You OK? Yeah, I'm fine. Sergeant Hunter! It's him. That's the guy. That's Slice. You sure about that? Yeah. McCall? Look who Ben found. Ron Miller, AKA Slice. I'll get an address on the guy. Good work, Ben. Great work, Tran.
I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> My father and his father before him were very respected diamond cutters in Vietnam. Well, you've learned well. I can never repay your kindness for what you have done for Ben. He's not the one who I did slice. I did. Sergeant Hunter, I would like very much for you to have dinner with us tonight. Well, if it's not too much of an imposition, I'd like that very much. Ben and I would consider it a great honor. Tran, the meal was delicious. Thank you very much. I don't think I've had authentic Vietnamese food for... Well, it's been some time. <laughs> Sometimes I find it difficult to get all the ingredients here. That's why when you live in America, you should eat American food. <laughs> I think it's nice to have both. Why don't you clear the table? Sergeant Hunter, I have something to show you in the living room. Certainly. was taken years before we met. I know I have the same photograph at home. Why are you showing him that? Oh, I just thought he might find it interesting. The only one who finds all photos of Vietnam interesting is you. There is nothing wrong remembering how things were. There is if it keeps you from accepting how things are. You must understand, it is not easy being caught between two worlds. Ben is trying so hard to fit in. I know that. It's probably one of the reasons he's in so much trouble. Hello, Danny Martin here. I want my cut of the diamonds, and I want them now. What the hell's your problem? I got a call from my landlady. A cop's been checking me out. The dink must have spotted me in the mug book. I got to get out of town. All right, Slice Man, relax. You relax. Be in my place in 15 minutes, or you're going to find out how I got my nickname. Don't get too comfortable. I just got a possible address on Slice. I thought you said his landlady didn't give you anything. Oh, no, she didn't. I checked with the post office. This guy is so intelligent, he's having his mail forwarded. Oh, I love smart crooks.
shot once with a large caliber. Could have been the same 45 that was used to kill Riggle. I'm betting 10 to 1 it is. If that's true, Ben could be in an awful lot of danger. Yeah, I'm going to set up surveillance in Tran's house. Drop me off. I'll go talk to Stone and Martin. Sergeant Hunter, why is there a policeman? What's wrong? Ron Mellor, the man Ben identified, was found shot to death in his apartment. Is the killer after Ben? Well, we're not sure, but just to play it safe, we're going to keep the house and Ben under surveillance. I promised Mr. Zelta I'd recut a diamond for him. He's coming for it today. I'd better call him and tell him I'm staying home today. Yo, look, Tran, why don't you go ahead and go to work? I'll stay here with Ben. It'll be all right. Ben, I'll see you later, huh? Yeah, right. He has such a sense of duty. To rich fat cat customers. What's the problem, Ben? You're kind of tough on your father, aren't you? He's a good man. He's done nothing but love you. He and my mother told me my real father is dead. But I know that's not true. You see, he was some GI who got lonely during his tour. So he didn't number my mom about how much he loved her and all that. But then he went back to Stateside and forgot all about her and me. Well, maybe he didn't know about you. Yeah, right. We think that he was one of the men that stole your car off the lot. No, I've, I've never seen him here. But I'll show it around at the sales meeting tomorrow morning. I mean, maybe somebody has. Well, good. I'd appreciate that. Uh, you know, it's possible that he came in posing as a customer to check out your security. Mm -hmm. I don't understand any of this. I mean, why all this bloodshed over a simple car theft? We're trying to figure that out, Mr. Martin. I have been in this business for 30 years. I have never seen anything like this. Well, I'll answer it. Kids are just nuts today. I mean, they run around, they're hopped up on drugs, armed to the teeth. And what kind of society are we living in? Let me know if any of your salesmen recognize that man, would you? I will, Sergeant. Thank you. Thank you. Ken, uh, when is Danny coming in? I've got some invoices I need him to sign. Oh, I gave him the day off. He said he had some errands to do. Well, by the way, bring those invoices up to my office. I'll take care of them myself. Right, right. I'm gonna need you. Yeah. Tell me again you don't know anything about the diamonds, Danny boy. Tell the Dutchman here. Diamonds? The hell are you talking about, Jack? Wait till my uncle is about this. Hey! Uh, don't treat me like a fool. The cops showed me a mugshot of a guy I've seen you hanging out with. So what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Now I tell you where they they're in my car, the behind the behind the, the radio speakers. Check it out. <coughs> <coughs> Who else was in on this? Nobody. You really are a ruthless little slime, aren't you? 
Hmm? I'm, I'm shocked, Danny. I'm really shocked. <coughs> So, what put you on to our little enterprise, Danny? Hmm? I heard you talking in the office next door with Franz. You didn't know I was there. Oh, and you saw an opportunity to get ahead. <laughs> Do you think you can fence diamonds like car stereos, huh, Danny? <laughs> hmm? Not uh, only do you uh, steal from me, uh, but you whack my cutter. Who, Franz? Oh, so you don't know everything after all, huh? A good diamond cutter is more valuable than the stones, Danny. Hey, I have my own cutter all lined up. The Dink's old man, we were gonna hold the kid hostage and then the old man was gonna do the diamonds for us. He could still do it. Smarter than I thought, Danny boy. Yeah, I'll wait here for me, Ben. Okay. Correction, twelve L seventy nine. One L maybe one. Yeah. Danny Martin, huh? Yeah. One small caliber slug shot to the back of the head. Ben! You feel like making an idea on this gentleman? I've seen dead people before. The speed. Yeah. Danny wanted to take a joyride. Why would he steal a car? Now, Ben, that night at the car lot, was there anybody else there besides Speed and Slice? What do you mean? Well, did you see them talking to anybody? No. Like I said, they were just out to grab the car. They broke through the gate and were looking through all the windows with a flashlight. What were they looking for, keys in the ignition? I don't think so. They broke in. Well, wait a minute. Were they looking in the windows? Or were they looking at the stickers on the windows? Yeah. They were reading the stickers. I remember now. Yeah, they were looking for one specific car. I don't know where else to go. I've run background checks on everybody that works here, and they're all clean. Let's check out Regal. Why? A guy was a victim. I know. Let's check him out anyway. OK. Let's go, Ben. Uh, good night, Clayton. Good night, Mr. Nguyen. Come with me, quietly. Doesn't look like anybody's home. Maybe I should come in and wait till your dad gets back. Look, I don't need him, and I don't need babysitter. Babysitter. Why don't you just leave me alone? 
What do you know about me anyway? I know your father married your mother when you and she had nothing. He brought you to this country, gave you a good home, loved you. And when you got in trouble, he called me. Yeah. Yeah, why you? Why not some other cop? Because he knew I was the only one that would help you. But he told me he never met you before. He was telling you the truth, Ben. He'd never met me before. But your mother had. I'm your father, Ben. I knew it. All of a sudden, there's this cop who was helping me out. I should have seen it. Ben, listen to me. Why didn't you tell me that before? Because I didn't know how you'd take it. No. No, you just didn't think I was worth it. That's not true, and you know it. Yeah, it is. Or maybe it's too damn ashamed to have had me for his son. That's not true. Ben, damn you! Ben! Ben! One way, one. Fifty-six, go. Meet Sergeant McCall on tax seven. Hunter. Hunter, I'm down at the Diamond Mart. Two guys just came in and snatched Mr. Nguyen Tran. The security guard saw the whole thing. He called the black and white. We have any idea on the two guys? From what he said, it sounds like one of them could have been stoned. Mr. Nguyen. But you're gonna have to hurry it up. You see, time is not one of our luxuries here. Okay? You know, if you do a really exceptional job here today, we, we could make this a regular thing. You know, cut you in. On the other hand, screw this job up even a little bit. Dutchman will have to break all your fingers. Yeah, okay. All right, keep me posted. What do you got on Tran? Anything? No. That was McCall. She was phoning from Stone's apartment. It's clean as a whistle. Looks like he cleared out. Damn. They got to be here somewhere, Charlie. Look, I can tell that you're upset about Ben, but he's going to turn up. We'll find him. You know, that boy's been angry for so long. I just felt as though if I didn't tell him, he'd go on being angry the rest of his life. Well, for what it's worth, I think you made the right decision. Yeah. Right, Bill. 17 years of age, Amerasian, 5'9", about 145 pounds. The last seen wearing jeans, jeans jacket, white tennis shoes. Right. He's on foot, so he probably hasn't gone very far. Great, appreciate it. What's up? You were right about Regal. He is new at selling cars. He used to be cutting diamonds over in Austria. They were smuggling diamonds. Got an address on Regal? Yeah, 75 West Hillshire in Hollywood. Great. Superlative. I told you you could work with speed and precision at the same time. All you needed was a little faith.
Duran? Hey, Duran. Uh, just relax. You're gonna be okay. Harrison, RA unit immediately. Code three. Just take it easy. You're gonna be okay. How you doing? Very tired. Have you been here long? I've been here since they brought you in, Tran. You've been in surgery for about three hours. There are things I must say to you. My daughter, you should rest. We'll still talk about them later. No, no. This has to be said now. should thank you, Tran. You brought Ben into my life. Father. When I got home, Priestman told me what happened. I would have been here sooner, but... I'm so sorry. It's all right. Everything is going to be all right. Sleeping there. I hope he'll be okay. Ben, he's gonna be just fine. He just needs some time to heal us all. You hungry? No. I think I just stay here until he wakes up. I can't change what's happened to you over the last 17 years, Ben. I just want you to know that... Right now, I just want to be your friend, if you'll let me. All these years, I wonder who you were. What you were like. I wonder if I was anything like you. I just wanted to know who my father was. Well, now you know. You should also know that you've had a father for the last 17 years. A good man. A man that's loved you. Raised you. Given you a good home. Worried about you. I think that's a pretty good definition of fatherhood.
I'd just like to be a part of your life, Ben, if you let me. That's up to you. I'm going to come by and see your father tomorrow morning. You think about it. Hey, Rick. I guess I am kind of hungry.